If you struggle with line item detail inside your Airtable database, then this video is for you. We've been having this come up uh, quite a lot lately with our clients in the last week and a half. And so we just wanted to put a video out and address this very issue. So if you're looking to get some clarity on how to build line item detail, particularly going into an automation with it as well, then stick around and let's get into it. Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner of Gap Consulting, where we help businesses to get organized and automated using Zapier and Airtable solutions. As I mentioned in this video, we're gonna be going into detail about setting up the proper line item detail inside your Airtable database. But before we get there, if you are new to this channel and have not already subscribed, and if you're looking to level up your Airtable game, definitely do click that subscribe button. Uh, you don't wanna miss out. We put out new content on a weekly basis. So click subscribe. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into my screen. All right, so what you see here is a pretty standard example where you'd have some line item detail. Now, for this example, we've got a PO and a PO uh, line item you know, for purchase order. You might also have something like invoice and invoice line items, something like that. Basically, this is a two table uh, solution, right? Uh, and so really what you need here is some sort of a PO number is gonna be your ID for your uh, original PO for the, the high level, the PO itself. And I'm sure there's a lot of other detail that you'll wanna bring in there. You'll probably wanna link it to maybe some customer or client information, uh, maybe some vendors as well. Uh, you know, For the sake of this example though, we kept it really simple and we just threw an email field in. But in the real life you know, use case, you'd probably have a linked relationship with a lookup to that uh, email. And then of course, you're gonna to link to the PO line items, but that's what you see here. And uh, we'll get into what this other, uh, what these other text fields are over here in just a moment. All right, now we're gonna go over to the line items and let's take a look at this. So as you see here, we've got pretty much the same setup. Um, the way that you name the uh, line items is entirely up to you. I like to do some sort of line item ID that identifies what was in that line item, but also lets me know what PO number it's linked to. And so for this, you know, I've set up a concatenate formula. It's combining the item and it's also uh, including the PO number. And so that way, at a glance, we can see really quickly and easily, this belongs to a certain PO and this is the item that was in this line item detail. So, all right, good enough. Now, this is, of course, you know, a rudimentary example. Uh, yours will always vary, but the general basics, uh, I hope, will also apply to you. So, you're gonna have something like the item that is in this line item. You're gonna have a quantity, maybe some other measurements that are specific to that item. Uh, in some cases, you may have your inventory a linked table. So, in this case, as you see, I just have uh, a single line uh, a single select field where I have you know, different options, straw, sticks, or bricks. Uh, but the reality is in most cases, you will probably have yet another table that is your inventory items and you'll link to that. Um, but for this case, you have, like I said, we kept it simple. So we've got items. You probably have some sort of quantity. Uh, maybe some other information is gonna flow in here that's related to the item, like uh, the uh, dimensions of the item, maybe the, uh, you know, some cost specifics or something along those lines. And of course, we have to link to a PO, right? That's a critical part of this as well. As you can see, this field or this view right here is set up to group around the PO number, it makes it nice and easy to see this. And we could also, if we wanted to, uh, sort by PO number in reverse uh, order. Uh, let's see, oh, no, nope, that's not gonna read it correctly. Let's uh, see how we might be able to bring that in. My idea there is, uh, my thinking there, Oh, here we go, of course. We need to do it at the grouping level, sorry. Uh, and the reason for this is, you know, we'll always see the newest POs at the top, and so these are probably the ones that we're still working on, and uh, the other stuff is kind of just kind of be shoved down to the bottom. Okay, now the important thing in this setup is we wanna have some capabilities to get that line item detail in at the PO level. And the reason for this is, as somebody submits a new PO, we want, in this example, to send them an email that says, we've just received a purchase order for these items. These are the line item details. And so how do we do that? Well, the easy way to do that is once we set up this PO, let's say this, is, this new one is gonna be 5002, and I'll just use my email so this automation comes to me. And uh, now, of course, we would have some line items uh, created 
And in this case, we'll just manually add some line items. So let's say we have a two quantity order of straw. And we also have, uh, we'll add a new one down here. Uh, let's say we have a three quantity order of sticks. Okay. So now what we want to be able to do is have an automation that looks at that line item detail and sends it out to them in an email. And what we have here is a lookup field. Now, there are many, many ways that you can solve this problem. The nicest way to do it, though, is to do some, uh, you know, break it up so that you're getting something on a line every time, right? And so you don't want to see, you know, a long string or a long array of text that just says, hey, these are all the things you just ordered. It's easier if you break it up by line, right? And so we're going to build, effectively, that's what this uh, lookup formula is doing. So the first thing, or this, this formula field. Uh, so we got a couple steps to get there. Now, the first thing we need to do is perform a lookup. And what we're looking up is what we call the output pretty. So output pretty, in this case, you can make it whatever you want. But in this case, it says item, and then it gives the item, and then there's a break, and then it says quantity with the quantity, right? So it's simple concatenate formula. Now, like I said, your output can be whatever you like. Uh, I just made this one uh, pretty simple and basic for this example. So that's going to come in in the lookup field. Now, if we were to send this data over in our email, as I mentioned, it's going to be one long string and it doesn't look great. So let's break it up. So the next thing we want to do, we could write a formula to look at this lookup field. The only trouble with that is because of the nature of the data in this lookup field, it's not registered as text. Uh, and so that causes a bit of a problem for us when we try to replace it. You'll see here that the lookup is actually uh, an output for a uh, unique array. And so that's, it's not actually text, it's an array. And that's why the formula has a little bit of trouble reading it. So before we write a formula to break it up in lines, we'll do one other thing. So in this formula, what we're doing is we're concatenating the lookup, which effectively turns this field here. And I don't know why I called it lookup. I should have called it roll up. So forgive me while I make that change. But uh, this rollup field, then, we are going to uh, run this concatenate on. And that effectively turns it into text. The purpose of this is so that we can perform some additional things on it in the next stage. So now we've effectively turned that array into text by concatenating it. And now for the fun stuff, we're going to do a substitute. And so we are substituting the text here with every time we have the word item, which begins a new line, Every time we have that, we're going to replace it with slash n item. Slash n here is the, um, the way that we can tell Airtable that we want to break into a new line. And so it actually doesn't output this as text. The slash n is uh, essentially hitting enter. And then the, the text comes in the word item. And so as you see here, we have uh, uh, the first thing here is the word item. And so it hits basically starts a new line. So we're on a second line and it outputs this and then it replaces the next one and it outputs that. So this is how we're able to break that into multiple lines. And now we have it in, not, in a nice way that we can deliver uh, outwardly. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at this, the zap here. It's pretty simple and straightforward. We say, hey, every time there is a new record that appears in the uh, let's go ahead and take a look here. Anytime that there's a new record that appears in our table, uh, the PO table, that is when we are going to perform this automation. Pretty simple and straightforward. And here's what the automation is going to look like. So we're going to send it to the email. Remember, back on the PO level, we have the email address here. So we'll send to that email. And here's where we can bring in some data. So let's go ahead and actually test the step for our newest record. We'll pull in some new samples here. And here we go. There's that new PO that we just created, 5002. Let's use this one. And we will continue from here. And now we'll take a look and see what the output here is going to be. So it's going to send it to my email, which is good. Always, side note, always send to your own email when you're testing. Uh, and then from there, we're going to bring in PO number. And then the PO number is dynamic, so it'll change. And we're sending some text that says, here are your line items, and it's breaking that up. So in our line item example, we did quantity of two straw and a quantity of three sticks. And that is exactly what's showing up. Let's go ahead and send this. We'll actually run a test on this step. Uh, for the purpose, let's find it. There it is. 
uh, for the purpose of just making sure that it comes in properly. All right, and here we are. There's that email. It says, here are your line items, item, and we have it nicely on a new line. So this is a great way to really simplify this. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are many ways that you can tackle this problem. You can actually look this information up in your line item table and go line by line, perform a little bit of JavaScript or something to run that and loop it multiple times. But this is the easiest way to get that done. So I hope that that really uh, simplified this whole thing for you. And I'd love any feedback that you have on this if you run into similar troubles of your own or if you have an even easier solution as well. All right, as always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you have some business questions that you'd like to run by us, definitely swing by our website. The link will be in the description and we offer up time so that we can hop on a call with you. You can book directly there and we can set something up that works for both of us. What we'll be discussing is building a solution for you that puts all of your data in one place and gives you a nice concise dashboard so that you know what's happening in your business at all times. Additionally, we will work on building custom bespoke automation for you so that you can eliminate the time that you spend on repetitive tasks and save countless hours every week. So if that's of interest, definitely swing by our website and check out the different offers that we have there.